Shalom, brothers and sisters. Um, I wanted to come before you today to share a quick message. Um, this message will not be long, uh, most likely about 20 minutes. But I was just um, reading a particular scripture today that I'm going to share with you. And my spirit was quickened and then the Ruach began to pour into me and to um, unveil some things that maybe many of us may not have noticed um, before. And this is, uh, for me, this was a pretty big deal because it, the Ruach opened up my eyes to what happened in the beginning and the plan that Satan had at the beginning and how he's, you know, um, enacting that same plan again today with the hopes of yielding the same results. Um, but this time it will be a different outcome. And so I wanted to share with you um, quickly, if you can give me about 20 minutes of your time uh, to share with you what the rock um, gave to me this evening. So... When we read uh, Matthew 12 and 25, it tells us that a house divided cannot stand. And so having said that, if you are divided, you cannot stand. And if you cannot stand, what immediately happens? You fall, right? And so I would like to share uh the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible's definition for what it means to stand. It says that to stand means to be firm. It's a pillar. It's something that grabs hold or supports something else. It's the passing of strength or skill to the next generation. A large group of the same kind are stronger than one. So immediately, when I read this, I thought about the uh, the saying um, that there are strength in numbers. I thought about the oneness of Yah. And so when a house is divided or when a house is not firm, it is because there are inconsistencies. And when there are inconsistencies within any house or a family or a particular group, this is when other things are able to sneak in or things are able to come within that family or within that group and change the very fabric of it and to destroy it, but from the inside out. And this is what is currently happening to um, the churches of today. The things that the church and the supposed house of Yah, the things that they used to stand firm on many years ago. We see today there are no more. Um, the church is no longer firm or no longer stands firm on the biblical, biblical principles. And it's because there are inconsistencies in the traditions that have been passed down. There are beliefs and there are orders that, that have crept into the house that have caused a great separation from the very things that kept us united with the one and living true Yah. There is a major disconnect from the foundational teachings of our master, of our Mashiach, Yahusha, and the message of salvation that we hear being preached today. Um, there is a distribution of knowledge today that has unknowingly to many crept into the hearts of his believers. They have, uh, this knowledge that has crept into the churches of today has caused many to seek understanding from spirits that are severed from and from spirits that are outside of the wisdom of the set apart spirit of Yah. So, 
to bring a clearer picture to the meaning of uh, Yahusha's words in Matthew 12 and 25, that a city or a house divided against itself cannot stand. Um, we need to take it back to the beginning in Genesis chapter three. Remember Adam and Eve, they were in the house. Okay, Adam and Eve were in a perfect house. Um, they were in the house that was built by Yah himself. They were in the Garden of Eden. And so the question is, what was allowed in that house, in the house of Yah that caused this great division, this great fall? What was in this house? So as I was just meditating and pondering over um, Matthew 12 and 25, I just heard the Ruach say that the house is your mind, okay? And so the foundation of the division and, the, and what happened um, in that garden, the fall, the foundation of the division is centered around knowledge. It's centered around a promise, a promise um, that Satan gave to Adam and Eve to for them to be able to assess, to assess information in secret, um, to assess uh, mysteries uh, from sources that were not authorized by Yah for them to know. And so it's not a coincidence that um, the fall of mankind, the fall of mankind, began with the plot to divide the house through temptation. And so I was just when I thought about that, and I I kept pondering over Yahusha's words in Matthew uh, twelve and twenty five that um, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And then when the ruach just quicken my spirit um, as it pertains to the division that took place. And once that division takes place, Yahushua says that it cannot stand. And so that's where we get the same, you know, the fall of mankind and how it began in the garden. It began with the division, um, them wanting knowledge and having that access to information and secret and having access to mysteries from sources again that Yah had not authorized for them to know. So again, there this is not a coincidence that the fall of mankind began with the plot to divide the house. This was Satan's plot to divide the house through temptation. And so um uh, let me read, I want to read Matthew 25, and I'm going to put it on the screen um, so that you can see it. And Yahushua knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And so it begins with Yahushua knew their thoughts. He was speaking to uh, the Pharisees, okay? He knew their thoughts. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go along with the rest of this message. Yahushua knew their thoughts. And when he um, knew their thoughts, the thoughts of the Pharisees, he told them that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And so you see the kingdom of Yah has a culture, okay? The kingdom of Yah has a culture. It has a foundation that is predicated upon our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, who, who he himself said in his very own words, receive his teachings from his father. He said his words were not his own words. And so the house of Yah has an image. The house of Yah has an image. The house of Yah has a likeness. And that image and that likeness was um, created and placed within us 
from the very beginning to be just like them, meaning to be just like um, Yah and Yahusha. Adam and Eve, they were given the house rules, okay? They were given the laws. They were given the teachings and the instructions. They were given the house rules to stand on, to be firm on, to grab a hold of, as we learned earlier, and, and that uh, support that they were to pass on to their next generation. So they knew, okay? Adam and Eve knew what his words said. They were told how to think, okay? But along comes the serpent, crafty, okay? Honey, his, his ways um, are not easily known. They go undetected. Okay, this is the reason why we have to be on guard. So along comes the serpent, crafty, cunning, subtle, okay? But you, you hear him say, did Yah really say that? Did he really? That word there, really? Did Yah really say that? So although Eve initially stood firm, Satan, through the serpent, got Eve to think differently. Remember, we just got finished reading um, in Matthew 12 and 25 that our master Yahushua told the Pharisees, he, he and he um, discerned their thoughts. It starts off before he says that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. He discerned their thoughts. It says he knew their thoughts. And so, although Eve initially stood firm, Satan through the serpent got Eve to think differently. She repeated to him what Yah told them, that if they touched this tree of knowledge and good and evil, that they would surely die. But then the serpent says, well, did Yah really say that? Is that what he really said? And so again, although Eve initially stood firm, okay, she initially stood firm. She initially uh, stood firm and grabbed hold onto the support that was given to her, okay? But eventually... Satan, through his cunningness, he got Eve to think differently. He got her to feel differently about the foundation of the house, which the word, which is the word. And then she began to question the support of the house. Can you believe that? This is what the rock revealed to me. Satan... Through his craftiness, through his cunningness, got Eve to think differently, to feel differently about the support of the house. Hmm. Well, it does look good for food. And it does look pleasing to the eyes. And it looks desirable to make one wise. Okay? He got her to think differently. He got her to feel differently about the support. Although initially she stood firm, he got her to be divided. Remember, an, uh, un, a man who is divided is unstable in all his or her ways. And so the moment that the serpent got Eve to think differently, and Adam, along with Eve, he disobeyed Yah. But, as, but the moment that the serpent got Eve to think differently and the moment that he got Adam to disobey Yah, the house became divided. And at that very moment, Adam, Adam and Eve, they were separated from the house, okay? They were sent out of the house. They were banished out of the house of Yah, out of the Garden of Eden. And that, brothers and sisters, 
was the beginning of the fall of mankind the division of the house because the house, okay, Adam and Eve, they became divided, okay? That was the desolation of the kingdom as Yahushua HaMashiach told us in Matthew 12 and 25, that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Desolation means isolation and it means devastation it means anguish desolation means despair it means sorrowfulness it means misery it means mourning and it means sadness brothers and sisters when adam and eve were banned from the garden they were devastated they were in anguish. They were in despair. They were in so much sorrow and misery and mourning over what they had done. If any of you have read the book of Adam and Eve, they were trying to commit suicide. They were in so much uh, sadness and anguish over how the enemy had deceived them, had caused them to think differently okay the, the before you do anything uh physically the division first starts in your mind okay the division first starts in your mind that's why it, he tells you that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his or her ways this is what happened today's message um is a warning okay it is a warning um satan he is um doing the same thing again he has no new tricks he has no new strategies he he's he's he, he's using the, the same uh tricks the same strategies the same Tactic, tactics that he used before. He is the ultimate strategist. There is nothing new under the sun. When you read Genesis chapter three and five, it says that the serpent says, you shall surely not die. For Yah knows that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes will be open and you will be as gods, knowing good and evil knowing light and darkness. In Genesis chapter one, after Yah saw the light, the scripture tells us that he divided the light from the darkness and then Yah said that it was good. Yah said that it was good that light be separated from darkness. Yah is light and there is no darkness in him. Let me say this again. Yah is light, and in him there is no darkness, and in his house and in his coming kingdom there will be no division, there will be no darkness. I want to read a couple of scriptures from Revelations 21 and 22 and what they say about the coming kingdom, the coming of uh, house, the holy city that is coming down from heaven. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yah out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yah is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and Yah himself shall be with them and be their almighty one. And Yah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. When you look at verse four, what is truly being said here 
when it says that Yah will wipe away all their tears, there'll be no more death, there'll be no more sorrow, there'll be no more crying, no more pain, for all the former things will be passed away. What this uh, verse is really saying is there will be no more desolation. There will be no more desolation because we will be with him. Verse 23, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of Yah did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor in it. Revelations 22 verse 5 says this. Pay attention to this verse. And there will be no more night there. Let me say this again. There will be no more night there. There will be no more darkness. There will be no more night there. There will be no more darkness. There will be no division. He will not have to separate the light from the darkness because there will be no more night. There will be no more darkness. There will be no need for the lamp of a light. You won't need light. You won't need a light for a lamp or the sun because darkness won't be there. What is the purpose of having a light? so that you can see in darkness. When it gets dark outside, we need street lights. When you're driving in your car at night, you need to turn on your headlights. Revelations 22 and five says, in the end, when his coming kingdom, when his house comes down out of heaven, the holy city, there will be no need for the light of a lamp or of the sun because night won't be there. Darkness won't be there. For Yah Almighty, our Almighty One, will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if that just gave you hope, if, if that just made your stomach splutter. You see, the trick of the enemy and the reason why I wanted to share this message, the trick of the enemy, the rock shared with me this evening, is to do what he did in the beginning. He wants to bring dark, darkness and light together again. Let me say this again. What the Ruach revealed to me this evening is that the trick of the enemy is to do what he did in the beginning. He wants to bring darkness and light together. His plan and what he's doing right now, working through his prophets, through his, mu his musical prophets, through uh, Beyonce, through Jay-Z, through Lil Wayne, through uh, these so-called Christian gospel artists like a uh, Kirk Franklin and and like I uh, uh, can't think there's so many of them Yolanda Adams and Tasha Cobbs these artists who mix dark dark and good and evil darkness and light he's doing this again his plan is to do it again to bring darkness into the house of Yah we see this going on within the church. The church no longer, as I said in the beginning, is standing firm on scriptural principles. They're no longer standing firm. His plan is to bring darkness into the house of Yah, to work um, within and work its way from within and then have it spread out. A little bit of leaven, Yahushua said, leavens the whole lump. So if Satan, Hasatan, can bring darkness into the house of Yah and allow it to work from within, to spread without, he knows that the house will be divided. His plan is to cause the
the set apart people of Yah to believe that mixing is okay. He wants Yah's very own people to abandon the house rules and to integrate the holy and the profane. He wants to plant this same seed of deception that he planted in Eve to make you believe that it is okay and that it is pleasing and it is a, des a thought to be desired to mix the common and the holy, the set apart and the profane so that by the time that you realize that you have been duped, okay? Remember this, the serpent deceived me. He wants you to think that this is okay so that by the time you realize that you have been deceived, it will be too late. By this time, by the time the majority in the world that are lukewarm, okay, realizes it, Yahushua will have vomited them out of his mouth, okay? They'll be pleading. By the time many realizes it, it'll be too late. They'll be like the foolish virgins. They'll be like those that are in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, that will be pleading with the Mashiach, Yahushua, about all of the good things that they have done in his name while forgetting all the while about all of the evil, all of the darkness, all of the mixing that they thought, that they thought were acceptable to participate in and to bring in his house. We are his house. The scripture tells us that we are his house. We are his building, okay? We are his house. And sin and darkness separates us and divides us from Yah. It removes us from his presence. When you read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Yah says, touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Brothers and sisters, Adam and Eve, touched it. Yah's very own chosen people, Yasharal, touched it. And many who are in the body today, they are doing the same thing. They are touching the unclean things. They are touching the things that he told them to come out from. Satan wants us as, as much as he can, okay? Satan wants us divided as much as he can get us to divide in these last days because he knows that division not only causes desolation, which is devastation, <laughs> but it also causes isolation from Yah. But this time, okay, but this time, this isolation will not be a temporary isolation. This time, this will not be a just simple time out. No, this time, the division will bring eternal separation from Yah that you cannot repent of. Yasharel, Yasharel, the house of Yehuda in the house of Ephraim to the 12 tribes. Our kingdom was already divided once. After the death of King Solomon, the kingdom was divided. The kingdom fell. Look at where we are right now, scattered abroad to mystery Babylon, serving our enemies, being afflicted, crying out to our Yah, wondering where he's at and why he has not come to see about us. Again, 
Yahusha says that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We were a kingdom. We were a kingdom at one time. And now we're divided. Yah wants to take the two sticks and unite them and make them one again in his hand. In his hand, by his power, by his might, yod. Okay? I want to show you something that is going to knock your socks off. Because as I was preparing this quick message, I heard the Ruach tell me to go and look up the word stick. Because he, the prophet Ezekiel was told about these two sticks and, to, and that these two sticks will become one again in his hand. Let me, let me show you how the Ruach was working with me this evening. Let me show you. In the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, stick means firm. Hallelujah. It means tree. It says the upright and the firmness of a tree. The upright and firmness of the tree. The elders of the tribe were the upright and the firm ones making decisions and giving advice. It says a tree or the wood from the tree. It also says the branches. Okay, the branches. So in the Hebrew, a stick means to be firm. At the beginning of this message, I shared with you what it means to stand because Yahushua says, in Matthew 12 and 25, that a kingdom or a house, a city or a house divided against itself cannot stand. And a kingdom divided against itself will fall. It will not stand. To stand, if you look on the right, means to be firm. It means a pillar. It means that it means something that you grab a hold of, something that supports you. What is it that we have been commanded to grab hold of? Who is our support? What is it that we're supposed to pass on to the next generation? Is it not the teachings and the instructions? Has he not said that we are one? What makes us one with the Father and his salvation, Yahushua? Is it not when we grab hold and take hold to his word, his teachings and his instructions, that way it will go well for us and our children? To stand on the right means to be firm. And the sticks, hallelujah, the two sticks that will become one, again, stick means to be firm. We will once again, as a nation, be the upright ones. That's what Yasharel means. Yashar means to be upright. The, up, the upright ones of our almighty Yah, to be upright and to be firm. In the Hebrew, a stick means to be firm. It represents the upright, hallelujah, and the firmness of a tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil might have looked good. It may have been pleasing, okay? But meaning it may have brought pleasure for a moment, but in the end, it brought death. Let me say that again. The tree of knowledge in good and evil might have looked good. It may have been pleasing, meaning it may have brought pleasure for a moment to Adam and Eve. But in the end, it brought death. It brought desolation, which we learned earlier was devastation and isolation from Yah. 
Do we want to fall for Satan's same tricks, his same tactics, the same strategies that our uh, former parents, Adam and Eve, and our forefathers who fell, who because and through their disobedience caused our kingdom that was one that was united to fall again? The coming kingdom of Yah, the coming house is going to be a house that no darkness will be there. It is going to be a house that is not divided. Uh, uh, there should be no division today with the true house on issues like abortion, like homosexuality, like fornication and what is marriage. We're not confused about what marriage is. We know that according to his word, that marriage is between a man and a woman as according to his word. We're not confused on uh, natural relationships because he has told us that a man shall not lie with another man as he does with a woman. We're not confused on if sex is marriage because we know that he has said through his word what fornication is. We're not confused on if we're a she or he or a male or a female because he called them male and female. He made a distinction between the two. We're not confused on when the Sabbath, the seventh day is because he has told us that this is his set apart day. The things that the world are confused on or should not be things that those who are in of the true kingdom, we should not be confused on those things because if we are taking hold of and we're grabbing onto his word that and we're passing that on to our children, we're training them up in the way to go. There, our children, when they're old, will not depart. They will not be confused because they have been taught the skills. They have been taught what to grab hold on to. And so this message today was a message for the people of Yah to, to do not fall for the trickery. Do not allow the enemy to deceive you like he deceived Eve. Do not disobey him and, and, and cause the enemy to make you believe that, it's, that it is okay to mix the holy with the unholy, the sacred with the profane. We are that, that house that praise Yah, Yah willing, will be coming down and will be united. There will be no division. It is time for the true house to come together so that we might be one with he who created us in his image and his likeness. He is restoring us. He is trying to restore us. He does not wish that any man would perish, but that they would come to repentance. He wants you to be saved. If you're listening to this message, salvation is free. There is no cost. If you have to pay to hear the word of Yah, then ask Yah to send you to someone who's gonna teach you for free. We thank you for those of you who have been supporting the ministry. And I thank you to those of you who have been here on my journey um, uh, of supporting me for the sisters and for those of you who, who have uh, tried to support me and, and uh, email me to uh, continue to support me financially. I thank you. Yah, he is doing his work and uh, I can't wait to share when uh, the, the, when the rain comes, when the famine is over, when he does what he is doing. But until then, I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to praise. I'm going to continue to worship and continue to do the work of the ministry. And so just continue to keep praying and I in prayer. Um, we love you all with the love of Yahusha. This message today, the Ruach wants me to share with you guys, please don't be deceived again. What Satan did in the beginning and the beginning of the fall was the division. 
to get us to think differently, to divide the kingdom, to divide the house. And once you allow uh, the thief to come into the house, they destroy things from the inside and out. And that is what is going on now. That is what happened in the beginning, Matthew 12 and 25, a kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to desolation and a city or a house that is divided against itself does not stand. What did the apostle Shaul say? Don't think that you're so strong that standing that you fall. Don't think that we are so strong that we can mix the holy and the unholy, that we can touch the unclean things and think that we will be okay because we won't. And so I love you all with the love of Yahusha. I pray that you were blessed by this message. If so, leave your comments um, and your questions or whatever you have to say below. Love you all. Shalom.